Hey fam, what's good? Welcome back to the podcast. This is Winter. Please make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at Lil Snow Babe. That is at L-I-L-S-N-O-W-B-A-B-E. I'm so glad to have you tuning into today's episode of the podcast and I really hope you enjoy it. You're like, okay, this breakup was traumatic. This yeah. was hurtful. This brought me a lot of pain. This took some joy, right? There, there was joy yeah. you were experiencing in the relationship. Now I'm not going to experience that same kind of joy anymore. No, I so I need to do something up. else, right? I need yeah. to do something else. And you realize, okay, candles might be my something mm-hmm. else. And then you realize, uh-huh. oh, candles is very much my something else. Something like, else, yeah. This and is just very being much. a businesswoman is just being able to say, this is mine and I'm working hard at something. Because you can either go left or you can go right. Exactly. Easy. And I chose to go, you know, right. So it was like, yeah, this is what I'm going to make of it. And this is my business. This is what I call me, you know. Um, I feel that. I mean, I, okay. I like, I want to ask this, but I'm like, it'll, I feel like it's a easy answer. Well, people listening will be like, oh, that's an easy answer. But mm-hmm. I'm going to ask it. Why, okay. like, why is making candles your therapy? Why? <sighs> Let's see. Easy answer. It just, I really feel like I get in a zone where, you know, I'm laying everything out and I'm popping my AirPods in and I'm just, I'm going to town. And I'm like, it's just being able to pour my candles and just watch how they cure it and form. I don't know. It just, it brings me happiness to see, oh, I made this product. Um, it's just, I don't know. Well, I know, but it's hard to explain how I feel when I make candles. It's just something that really, I really enjoy to be able to just say I made a product and use my product daily. It's just, it just makes me feel good, you know? Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, it's but just it's a so joyful hard, feeling. It's really harder to explain how I feel in the moment because I will have everything laid out. I will put my AirPods in, listening to some good music. Right. And I'm just my zone. I don't know what's going on on Twitter. I don't know what's going on on the news. I don't know what's going on with, you know, and I'm just focusing on the task at hand. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel, and I, and see, that's what I mean. That like, it's because candle making is a process. You know, there are steps. Yeah. You don't just get in there and do whatever willy nilly. You know, mm-hmm. like maybe if you're trying something new, okay. But even when trying a new scent, you still have to go through the processes before you, you know, explore that new scent. So it's like, well, I, see, I also, I've always found there being something therapeutic just about like, I know what's coming next, mm-hmm. you know? So when I'm doing nails, I know the steps. So like, I know what's coming yeah. next. So my body, like you said, I can just put on my music. I can just zone out. Mm-hmm. I can just do what I need to do. And then at the end, I have this really beautiful <laughs> wearable art on my hands mm-hmm. for two weeks or four weeks. Um, and that's just how I feel with my candles. It's just, these are my little babies. I put so much effort into these. It's just, it's it's something special that I'm happy that I picked up, honestly. Um, because I don't even know what I would be doing right now. That's how I, I, really feel. Don't, you know, I don't know what I'll be doing. I really don't. Honestly, I mean, I know I would have a blog, but honestly, I'm getting to the point where I still love writing and I write on my own, like in my notebook, but just trying to find things to write about is what's becoming harder for me. Mm. Um, And that's why, because blogging was my outlet. To, you know, before I even started Candles, I would write about any and everything I would go through and just try to give advice the best way I can. Mm-hmm. Um, especially going through those times, I was like, okay, I need to, I don't want to keep putting so much in my business. How can I like... Mm-hmm. Uh, right, how can I still talk about it, but not talk about it, but mm-hmm. talk about it? <laughs> and just being able to, I quote unquote, boss up in a way and just figure out what's important to me and nobody else, you know? Because I felt like I was just living again to make everybody else happy and i got to a point where i was like okay i gotta do something else because this is this is not the way i want to live completely you know i don't mind helping but yeah 
I gotta look out for me, you know? And that's what I mean. I don't think black women are given too many opportunities to do that. So we have to create them for ourselves. And I think there's a reason why black women are, what is it? Like, we're like the highest, like, rising number, something like that, of like small business owners and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like, it makes sense to me because black women are like, well, look, if I'm gonna be happy, if I'm gonna love myself, if I'm, if I'm gonna resist against what's happening to me, I have to own this. Like, it has mm-hmm. to be mine. The thing I do that, like, sustains me through this lifetime and this realm has to be mine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, and one of the ways, most thing yours is to, well, own a business. Start a business. Like, offer something to people that you offer in such a way where, yeah, they could maybe go over here and go over there to get it, but they're going to want to come to you. Yeah. You know? Like, because nails. There are so many people out there that do nails it doesn't matter if they're licensed not licensed whatever there's just a thousand options someone will get their nails done so i have to do it in such a way where someone's gonna still want to come to me you know exactly you're gonna always have those few people that is like no matter what yeah i might get my toes done at this place but oh i'm gonna go to winter and get my nails done. right and i don't and i'm and i'm here for because i'm that kind of person like i get mm-hmm. my feet done one place i get my hands in one place that's how mm-hmm. i feel but i don't feel like doing yeah. my nails there's only one place <laughs> one Uh person who i'll go to and let do my hands so it's you know yeah and that's fine but it's because you don't want to cheap yourself you know yeah take care of yourself no you want to you want to but it's the same it's this you know but i think black women we just we've realized especially within this new era right within the last i think like you know 10 years we've really understood like damn i guess i have to own my happiness which you always yeah. have had to own your happiness, but I mean, you have to really. It was never pushed. Yes. It was never, you know, because grandma not really taught. Talk- well, some. I'm not even going to lie. Some, I mean, but- some, but if we want to talk some. about the greater collective, we lined up all, you know, black mm-hmm. right now. I don't think that percentage, it might, maybe it might be higher than I'm thinking, but I don't, we're we not yeah. going to find that 70% of black women have grandmothers that own a business. No. Exactly. You know, that's not about to be the It number. could be moms. But it could be moms, grandma. right. But not grandma, which goes to show you, though. So if we go even farther, great grandma. So then, baby girl, you only one generation out, mm-hmm. you know, from having, being able to see in real time a black woman owning something. Mm-hmm. But then, see, that's not even really, it's a benefit to you. But see, you're still only one generation out, which means mama yeah. still has to work out so many kinks. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you got to go see it all. Whereas for other people, they about seven generations out. You know, all exactly. their mama's mamas have owned something or was the VP or the... So mm-hmm. it's kind of smooth. It's almost second nature to you. You know, it's like, um, I in no way support Kylie Cosmetics um, or mm-hmm. that brand simply because I know people they've personally stolen from. And I've seen yeah. the receipts and the emails and the phone calls and have heard it. So I'm like, y'all mm-hmm. can be horrible to people yeah so i know i do i support it but just the way how they're built well kylie jenner is a, a, a great example the reason why she became a billionaire in assets y'all mm-hmm. not in bank account in assets. exactly pat mcgrath is a billionaire in bank and in assets anyway Come on now. the reason why she became a billionaire before her sisters is because although her sisters grew up in wealth they did not grow up in the same kind of wealth and access that kylie did Right, exactly. money was not always available to her sisters. There were definitely mm-hmm. times where their father had to be like, uh, "Don't know if we're gonna mm-hmm. have the same kind of family vacation. We're still gonna go somewhere and just might not, not be as go- extravagant." Mm-hmm. And that's fine. You still get to flex and keep up with the Joneses. You just gotta make sure you file them taxes on time, though. Right? Exactly. This year we can't play around. Um, mm-hmm. Then well, by the time they got to the level they're at now, okay, then Kylie Jenner is born. She's a baby. So by the time she starts to understand what money is, what wealth is, what access is, where her whiteness is, baby girl was able to capitalize off of that so smoothly because access was always available to her. Money was always available to her. She has never, where her sisters have had to worry about a bill, she exactly. has never had to. Exactly. Where her mother has had to worry about her rent. She mm-hmm. has never had to. She does not know what that experience is. So she can never, ever, ever, ever empathize with anyone on that. Where well, her mm-hmm. sisters can to a level where their mother <laughs> certainly can and where their grandmother most certainly can, right? Yeah. But Kylie cannot. She can yeah. maybe sympathize, maybe, but she cannot empathize. 
-hmm. And so that, in a sort of twisted way, maybe that's not the word, but that gave her a leg up. Yeah. In monetizing what she is and who she is and her lifestyle and being able to figure out how to flip the bag. She said, oh, I've always only seen money. So she's also never, it's never been a thought in her mind that she couldn't own something and yeah. make it make the most for her for as long as she could. Yeah. So where you have people who are coming from that, you don't have black women having that same experience. And now we have a Jordan Woods and a Jody Woods who are mixed race, but are black. black. <laughs> They're extremely black in appearance and identify themselves as black women, which I appreciate. I do appreciate that. Jordan Woods is a mixed race woman, but identifies herself as a black woman. Yeah. Because there are so women that look like her yeah. who identify that's as like, mixed. Oh, no, I'm Caucasian. Right, who don't even identify as black women at all. Mm-hmm. Or identify or- only as mixed. And she identifies very much as being a black woman in America. Mm-hmm. So, even with that... Wow, I'm just elaborating on it. I'm like, that is so true. Like, mixed. Yeah. Like, uh- mixed yeah mixed people are like i'm mixed and you're like okay but like you are black no. like yeah when you go outside nobody goes well there's that mixed guy mixed you know, they go there's yeah. that black guy you know, here comes that black girl in the black room right they don't go here comes that mixed girl they go here go that black girl stop it mm-hmm. you know but um whereas jordan now right mm-hmm. has experienced things that her sister jody will never financially exactly. in a sense growing up mm-hmm. now jody might experience these things as an adult but growing up Right. Jody has never experienced some financial hardships that Jordan has with her mother and father. Exactly. Right. And now their father has transitioned onto the spirit. Mm -hmm. So that also brought maybe some financial hardships to their life. But Jody still doesn't have that same mindset. So it's also why Jody is progressing financially and socially, especially Mm -hmm. with her social capital, much quickly. I mean, much more quickly than Jordan has because she had Jordan as an example and Jordan had her mother as an example. So Jody is now two generations removed. Yeah. Where Jordan was only one. One. So there's that advantage. And I think for a lot of just black women, we just black, black, black Negro. um, (laughs) We might have one generation or we might have none. We might be the one doing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, it's like this 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 can only be a radical resistance. <laughs> like, yeah. There's no other way to describe what twenty something year old black women are doing right now in terms of owning businesses, mm-hmm. of making their business the thing that makes them happy, making their business their yeah. therapy. Like there there's no other way to describe that than it just being a radical resistance to like being a black woman in America. Like I'm not going to do the things y'all tell me I gotta do just to be happy and make a couple of coins. Yeah. That's impossible. Like mm-hmm. I should be able to finance my whole entire life happily. Yeah. By myself if I wanted to. By yeah. myself happily by choice. Okay? Right. Like, oh, I've had time ooh, I've remember ooh, family members, you know, I live a life where I like expensive things. So okay. Do I, and I've had people <laughs> Like, oh, well, you better find your rich husband. Why can I be my own rich husband? I am I am self-partnered. I am my rich husband. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> like, okay. I have to understand this is where they're coming from. Right. You know? So. Well, because their only example as well as a woman affording herself that kind of lifestyle is not through means of her own. Exactly. It's her husband. Her right. Man. So it's like, well... If you want to buy all of this for yourself, your husband has to give you the allowance to buy it all for yourself. Okay, but then I'm not really buying it for myself, am I? My husband's buying it for me. Yeah, and it's just, yeah. I don't want that. I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather. By the time I have a husband, I won't be able to buy it for myself. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm like on the tight, like me and my friends have this discussion, you know. A lot of my friends are, I can't wait to get married, this, this, and that. And, you know, if that's in God's plan for me, then so be it. But right now, I'm trying to form a life for myself. I mean, I'm very to- much on my Tracy Ellis Ross, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm, listen, like, if it's in God's plan for me. Exactly, then so be then it. Then cool. But, like, I'm cool. I'm cooling, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm liking money. living my life. I'm liking owning the business. Exactly. I'm liking making my own little money moves. I'm liking being responsible for me and me. Exactly. And I... I'm like, we sometimes, you know, go back and forth. And I'm like, you know, I'm okay. Like, I've got to the point. I'm okay if 
this is how I'm supposed to live by myself. But at least I know I'm working to add wealth within me. And then yes. even like, I can pass it down. Even if I don't have children or whatever, there's still, I have a nephew. He might have, you That's know, awesome. I have little cousins. I have, yes. I, I'm, I'm a God mother now. My, my mm-hmm. bros just had a baby. So it's just like, I would still like to be able to pass this wealth down to someone yeah. in my family. So it's like, I, that whole, I need a husband just so I can get to where I want to go. No, like, I, if he comes along, you know, we side by side trying to. But it's, but it's also like, if he comes along, when he comes along, I'm going to already be at where I'm going to be at. Exactly. So. And so it's not, that's another conversation. That is. But it's like, he's going to have to be there already. Mm-hmm. Shit. It's mm-hmm. not going to be no, um, sir, you are complimenting me. You are not yeah. above or below. We're not You're doing not none of that. making me. I made myself. Boom. Self-made. Yeah. But that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's really the crux of it all. Like. Black women have just, I feel like, really started tap. We always have, of course. I'm not going to listen, okay? The queens, okay, of Africa and all that. We've always been doing what we've been doing. But Mm -hmm. in these contemporary times, black women have really tapped in to understanding if I'm going to be happy in America, which is a journey on its own, (laughs) Forget about what you even do for work. Just Lord existing in America as a black woman and then wanting happiness out of it. Are you kidding me? Exactly. Oh, um, you're acting for right. You're acting for a lot. <laughs> now you want to now, now you want to do nails and make candles. All right, like exactly. you're you're doing a lot. Go get a job. You know, but it's like no, I don't want to get a job. Like a job it's, is it's, not fulfilling. It's get me. a job or be a housewife. Okay, and I don't want to do either of that. So <laughs> neither of those things appeal to then me. There's a category, you know, for me and you, where it's like, okay. And and thankfully we have these contemporaries who are doing it. Yeah. Like there are people literally in our immediate age range that they they do maybe they do have a husband or a wife or a partner, right? Mm-hmm. But they also had before they even had all that they they had their business they had their own yeah. they started their youtube and it, then they did this they you know they were started they were a writer and then they wrote the book and then they sold the book now they have two books you know like we're getting to see people who are actually doing these things and become successful for it so hopefully that generational gap right becomes smaller and smaller Exactly. Because you have the example. So maybe the example might not be like your mom, your grandma, mm-hmm. right? But it's someone else's mama. Mm-hmm. And you saw, well, she had a kid, so she has a child and she still did the thing. So if you, if it is in your spirit to still have the children, to still get married, to still be partnered, because marriage is not the only way to be partnered, right? To do all those yeah. things, you have a real life example. Someone who's only a year older than you are or a year younger than you are doing it. Yeah. And so it's becoming a norm. Right. So you're like, okay. I can I can do this and it's not that abnormal. And then you see that that person has created a tribe for themselves of 10 other women doing the same or similar. So you're like, okay, so people are out here. Like, people are very much doing this for real. Mm-hmm. So I can do it for real. I just have to do it. And you have to not, you have to not care about the naysayer. Like, so you're going for an African number two. You can't care. You have to be like, listen, I recognize I'm doing something that is so um, radical <laughs> mm-hmm. that is a literal form of resistance it's it's one of the most extreme forms like of self-love of being a black person mm-hmm. in america is i said i'm gonna own something but i'm not gonna just own it i'm gonna be happy in it it's gonna be therapeutic yeah. to me and people can't yeah. really fathom that because i feel yeah, like it's black. one thing to be like oh my work makes me happy but like when my work like it is it is part of my happiness it doesn't just make me mm-hmm. happy it's a part of my happiness it, yeah like it is when I think of happy, I do think of my work. When I think yeah. of therapy and healing, I do think of my work. Definitely. Whether I'm physically doing it or not doing it, just the very thought of it alone does that healing work for me, which is therapeutic. And people from other generations look at that and go like, ooh, you... Girl, this girl is out of her mind. Right, like, why won't she just get a job? Like, because when they... Because also when they see the struggles, right? Because I'm sure that owning your own business and... Because you offer a product. In which mm-hmm. you have to sell and ship and, you know, it has to arrive people and it has yes. to perform and how you said, right? Mm-hmm. 
that could be a lot. That could be daunting. And I'm sure that things didn't just go, you know, 100% full sale smooth at first. So I know when the, the family saw the struggles, they that's, you know, they'd be like, that's why they get a job. No. Yeah. You know, talk about that a little bit. How like, how did you even navigate that? Like, when there were the struggles and people were trying to be like, that's why you should just, you know, get a little job, make this your hobby. And you're like, no, I'm, make, I'm making this my career. <laughs> Yeah, like one thing I would say, because I have like a bomb ass mom and, you know, she'll tell me like, well, you know, Danita, this, this is just what you have to go through. You know, Mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's it's part of your story and it is what it is. I understand it's frustrating, but keep going. Don't let nobody, don't let your aunt tell you, oh, well, they hiring at (laughs) such and such. So, you, you know, there's times where it's been hard, you know, even at the beginning of Corona, but I, I believe because my belief is that everything's going to work out for himself. I just don't stress too much Mm -hmm. about what anybody else has to say, Mm -hmm. you know, because once I start feeding that into my mind, it's going to become a reality. And I just feel like if I keep thinking like, Oh, well, this is not, I'm not going to get anywhere. My sales aren't going to get, that's just what it's going to be. And I can't, I can't feed that negativity into myself. I'm so, I, I can't at all. Like once I feel myself getting into like, okay, maybe I should do that. You know, I'm like, okay, let me meditate. Let me burn one of my candles. Let me burn my face. Let me focus and really figure out how to decompress from this. Mm. Um, but yeah, one thing is, it's definitely my mom. Like, it's just the little thing she helps me get through. I'm not even going to lie. It's like just that push. Even when I can't push myself, she's there to push me. Um, to keep going. I just I just find that when you have supportive people around you, even if it's one person, even if it's yourself. Just no, continue. for real. Even if it's your it's yourself. yourself. <laughs> continue to remind yourself. Like I have sticky notes on my mirror is like wake up in the morning you know even if i wake up and i don't have an order i still look at that you know sticky note keep going Danita. it it doesn't matter that this is one day you know um so yeah i just continue to try to remind myself and when i can't remind myself i do have my mom there and i just you know practice what i preach and try to keep going read just keep trying to go it's so it's it's a process and yeah, it's a process. I will say that. But you know what? That is that, that is important though. The the support, even if it is just yourself or just one person mm-hmm. in your family, you're like not even mm-hmm. if it's just a friend. Because like for me, it's my grandfather. And when mm-hmm. I started having like clients in the home and everything, you know, some days were mm-hmm. booming, some days it was nobody. <laughs> um, or one person. Like one day I came home um, after work, and I had a client at like four that day. And I had flowers in my room. And I was like, my birthday just passed. I'm like, oh, maybe someone got me a delivery, whatever, no. And mm-hmm. I asked my grandpa, like, oh, like, you put flowers in my room? Like, where they, like who are they from? Like, da-da-da. My grandpa was like, oh, they're just for you because you had a, you had a client this week. And I'm really proud. And oh. I was like, <gasps> and it, that little stuff. Oh, my gosh. That's so sweet. <laughs> you know, like, I was in a ball out. I had, like, had, like, no clients. And I only had, like, one person that mm-hmm. week and then uh, one person that day. But, like, the fact that, you know, my grandpa saw that, recognized that. He saw all the work I put in, like, get through school, get the light, like, do all of that. Mm-hmm. And he sees the highs and the lows. But it was so important that during what was considered a low time mm-hmm. that, you know, instead of him being like, oh, maybe you should take a ne- you know an extra shift at work, you know, the time you're allotting to do nails. He said, no, I'm going to buy her some flowers and tell her I'm proud of her for even having the one client. Like, look at your success, you know? And Agreed. that meant so much to me because it was like, wow. And, <laughs> yes. And wow. even like doing things for yourself too. Yes. Just pushing yourself. Like, I'm a plant lady. I love plants. And sometimes when I do get in these moods, I start to overly buy plants. Um, I mean, that's okay. And, though. It's life. You're breathing yeah. life. You're breathing life exactly. into your situation. <laughs> exactly. And so it's just little gestures. You keep going. I know, like, Tom, I don't think I've had a point where I broke down crying yet. Mm. You know? Where it's to the point where I'm extremely stressed. But it, it can be little things. Like, I was behind in orders because my printer not working. Now I'm stressed. Like, mm. everything closed. How am I? You know? But you have to really just keep tapping in with yourself. And, like, continue to practice. You know, I'm, I'm, I keep referring back to meditation. Because when I get stressed, I will close my door, put a sign on it, do not come in. 
and I will get into my zone because it's just little things that help me keep going. I just, I'm so, I don't know where exactly I'm going to end, but I'm just keep going. We know it's all you can do. And especially in this time, you know what I mean? Especially in this time, it's really all you can do. <laughs> like, yeah. now during these days, it's like all you really, like, re- yes, all you really can do keep right pro- now yes. is just... Keep promoting yourself. Keep, you know, doing little things just to keep you going. Um, yeah. Because I'll be damned. Just... I'll be damned to have America force me into some unhappy shit just to pay yeah, rent. Not... No. I I will hop on only fans and it's not even shade i'm not even saying it like only fans is easy because i know it's not easy but it's just like i'd still rather do, uh, sex makes do me happy. something than look you know what i mean like sex makes me happy i'd rather monetize that <laughs> like mm-hmm. y'all not gonna force me into no job yeah. that i don't yeah. like with people who yeah. i don't like and just I to get like i mean i guess i how can i say this I get it's people like you have responsibility. Yes. You have kids Not to, to downplay any of that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I get that. And so sometimes you have to pick up a job here and there just to provide for the, you know, those extra. Right. Deals. But don't lose out of the vision. That's kind of my point. Exactly. Like, don't get comfortable exactly. in the job. Keep okay, you got the job. job. Like, but yes. remember, what do you want to do? You really want to be. You will be making those headbands. You will exactly. make headbands. I don't think it's stupid. You can get a headband in store for a dollar, but it don't matter. Your forty dollar headbands, baby, they're gonna be on Beyonce's head. It, don't worry about exactly. it. <laughs> it was this girl. I, I can't think of her name. I remember seeing her. I see her products sometimes. I do not follow her though. But she started off selling do rags. I don't know if you've ever seen that. And then some sparkly, but I think she sells some of them for twenty dollars and forty dollars. And people will be like. No one's buying it. I'm pretty sure it's Atira, my friend. She's light skin. Yes. With short hair. That's Atira. That's my friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm like. Yeah, no, people I'm drag like, her. They were like, who's going to buy a $40 do rag? Oh, Somebody. Honey, not you, though. Them. Not you. Exactly. Because you're not the target demographic. Exactly. So it's just little things. Like, people go. <laughs> Someone's gonna be that one person that got something to say. But that's why you have to just do it. And sometimes that one person who has something to say is a thousand people, but there's still mm-hmm. one person. That's how I look at it too when it comes to negativity. Yeah. I don't care if it's 3,000 of y'all saying who cares. You are one person because there exactly. is 25,000 people who will. Exactly. I'm, I'm really good at like blocking out negativity. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm too quick. Really I'm, I don't even like, be entertaining. I'd be like, I, you're literally blocked. Yeah, like, I don't even, that's why, and I, that, I think that's why it doesn't, ooh, excuse me, affect me so much when I hear little things or side comments, you know, it's just like, okay, well, that's your opinion. I didn't really ask for it, but you know. No, it literally. Is what it is. It's your opinion. Thanks for sharing, you know, hey, free speech. Okay, but um, I'm going to delete this comment, block, and go on my life. <laughs> and I'll be doing that too quick. I'll be like, I mean, that's cool. You can say yeah. what you want on your on but my people post. People get so consumed in trying to prove themselves to everybody. You're not going to please everybody. Definitely, and I and I don't. I think even to anybody that's thinking about owning a business, wants to own a business too, and all of that, like, don't even like, don't even try to please everybody. Don't yeah. even like yeah. literally yeah. make sure everything you're doing is pleasing to you. Yeah, you know, definitely. like everything you do for your business, you're doing for your business. Like it has to please you, it has to make you happy. Like it better bring you joy because let me tell you something: these, these motherfuckers do not care at all. <laughs> people don't. The people who are the loudest, right? The people who are talking like the most shit, yelling and screaming and saying you doing this wrong. I, they don't care. They at don't all. care because. When you go on to be who you're going to be, they're going to still be saying the same shit. So, obviously, it's not true. You know? Like, if any of that Especially was true. black women. We get teared down for so much. Ridiculously. And it's just like, we have to be built. You have to be built to just hold yourself high. And just keep doing on, it. Keep, no, yeah. like, keep on keeping on and literally, like keep doing it because if you don't again like you'll just get you'll just get stuck like you'll just get the society wasn't even made for us anyways and like that's that's why that's why i've been saying this whole thing is just radical because boom it's just it wasn't even made for us 
We're not. No one's it expecting wasn't us for to be black people, and then be a black, black woman. woman. Oh, so I couldn't. I couldn't even imagine. I I couldn't even imagine being like a black gay, a black trans. Oh my god! Man. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. I salute all of you because I don't even know. I'm. I'm, I'm it's enough being a black woman. And now you exactly. don't got. Now you done added on. It's too much. It's so almost like now to add on work because we have to work because capitalism <laughs> right to live. It's like. Don't ain't nobody expect your own people aren't expecting you to be happy in your job, exactly in your career and the thing that makes you money. So it's like the moment you step outside of that and you're like, listen, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something and it's gonna make me money. But whatever I'm doing, it's gonna be a form of self care. It's gonna be radical resistance and it's gonna be my (laughs) therapy. That is gonna be all these things, but it's also gonna earn me income and the lifestyle. That I like to that live. live. Exactly. And niggas is going to blink their eyes a lot, like the meme, and be confused. <laughs> and be confused that you would even take that route, because it's not an easy route. Like, it doesn't exactly. come easily. Every day is not perfect. But it's like, I'm still deciding to do this. For me. For me. Like, for me. <laughs> not for anybody else. Not to prove that I can do this. For me. I'm literally it- doing it for myself. And once y'all get that through y'all thick skulls, <laughs> we can all be happier. We can all benefit. Exactly. It's like once y'all get that, like we it, oh, it can all be so simple. It can all be so simple, but like you but have to fun. do it. Then comes easy in life as we're learning, and just keep going. That's it. You know, I might keep going nice. a lot, but only because my grandma. Um, but she, but it's true. He says that she would say that. God rest her soul. She would say that so much to me. Like, just keep going. So just keep going. I'm like, yep. Yeah. But when you think about it, isn't that's kind of the perfect advice? Because what else can you do? You can either stop or you can go. And I'm not stopping no time. You so. know? And that's something I get told a lot is uh, you can stop or you can go. There's no, there is no in between. Because see, if you're not doing it all the way, you're not doing it at all, actually. Exactly. <laughs> that's why there's no middle ground. Oh, I'm going to do a little. No, you're either doing it or you're not doing it. Everything in life is not black or white, but when you do own a business or you do, mm-hmm. you're either doing it or you're not. Like, you're either going to make the candle yeah. today or you're not going to make the candle today. I'm going to either post this video, okay, promoting this brand, doing my nails, or I'm not. Like, I don't, <laughs> I can't almost do it. Like, no, I have to just do it. Do it. Like, I have to just do it. I couldn't. Oh, I can't like almost do my client's hands. No, I kind of have to finish. Like, mm-hmm. or she's gonna leave out of here with all these seven fingers painted, and that's not. It's not conducive yeah. unless it's what we're going for. That's the style. Mm-hmm. Like, but if that's not the style, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Like, so no. Keep look. It's it. It is keep going, and it is you can either stop or you can go. So you do just keep going. You don't have these in betweens. They don't exist. The in between is a lie. <laughs> like exactly. Anyone who told you you can kind of sort of do no, they're not doing it. Honestly, that's what it is. People who can tell you you could be in the in between are people who are not doing it at all. So don't even. Yeah, they're them. just talking. They're just don't like, talk. have they started? <laughs> Did they even write down the plan? They didn't even write yeah. the plan down. And that's so important, too, just to write out a plan. It don't have to be, or, you know, just write out. Right. You don't have to even follow the plan. The plan could change the next day. That's fine. Yeah, just write it out. Like, I wrote my 2020 goals, and then I wrote out my five year plan. I haven't even looked at it. I don't even know <laughs> what's on there anymore. But, you know, just when you write out that plan, it just gives you structure in a way yeah Yeah. it's important it's important but it's kind of all i have for today i just wanted to discuss because i was just like you know i feel like we both do things that people don't traditionally view as being Mm -hmm. the most sound (laughs) choices of work yeah (laughs) especially like me for like there's a lot of nail techs yeah and there's the bright there's a lot of hair but when you say oh candles yeah I make candles. It's like people think do you crazy. make money off of that? No, like, look, people are like, "Are you okay? Like, <laughs> are you yes. going through something?" People are like, "Are you going through something? Like, are you?" It's it's not the norm, and it's it's okay, you know. It is okay to be in a category. But see, <laughs> that's the but that but also there's like you said, it's okay, and there's beauty in that. Yes, okay, so everybody's not doing it. Great, good mm-hmm. for me. Like. Yeah. Cause there will come a time where it's gonna be way more candle maker, way more black and making candles. But then see, you'll have already been in the game. Yeah. So it's like, what y'all finna say? 
You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but even but even me as a nail tech, like, see, there are a lot of nail techs, but not a lot of them work in gel exclusively. People oh, tell yeah, me yeah. all the time that I should like pick up acrylic work. It's just more options. It's more. Th- I'm like, I mean, yeah, that might be true for now. Acrylic yeah, is the older like product. Your, uh, it's gonna change. I and that's the thing. I know that the industry is gonna change, but I also know what I like. I know what I'm really good in. And I know my and expertise. It makes you happy. Literally, I'm like, it makes me happy working job. I don't know. And like, I, ugh, do you know, people, ugh, people tell me every day, like, you do nails so well. They look so good. Ah, da, da, da. Like, oh, you should really try acrylic. Like, you would really love it. No, I wouldn't. That's why I don't work in it. Sweetie, did you read? The- Thank you. For- yeah. People, people <laughs> like, aren't going to always. But I'm just like, did you even read my bio? Did you even look at the caption? I, I, oh, I made sure to say it in every caption. I don't work in acrylic. I don't want to work in acrylic. I don't like acrylic. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> like, So y'all don't ask. And yet here you are asking me. And I'm like, it will not make me happy. Because if it, cause yeah. here's the thing. If it was going to make me happy, wouldn't I be doing it? I would have been. Yeah. Like, don't you? Mm, especially in the industry I'm in. I know how lucrative. I, I understand. And I still made the choice to not do it. Like, yeah. Also, a lot of other nail techs are gonna be like, "I'm crazy, like girl, you can at least." Knit. No, I don't want to. I don't. Let me be in my. And then a year from now, it's gonna people be people doing exactly what you're doing. Exactly, who only want to get the services I'm offering, and then it's gonna be everybody who didn't even want to work it and is paying no mind who now have to pick it up, learn it, and who's mm-hmm. gonna be the one who's been doing it, who could teach somebody. Mm-hmm. Okay, then, like y'all, I have a plan. I have a vision. I wrote it down. Yeah. So I'm not worried about it. So let it. me stick to mine. <laughs> like, and you stick to yours. Okay? And if we're ever meant to intertwine, we will. But until it. it's time to intertwine, you keep doing what you want to do because it makes you happy. And I love that for you. But I'm also going to do what I want to do because it makes me happy. And I love that for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, you have to think about yourself. Period. Like, Period. There's no. There's literally nothing else. So that's. I enjoyed our conversation. That's really. That's just. I just want people. I just want to let people know. Like it's possible. You can do things that make you happy and also earn an income and like exactly. be happy doing your work because your work is your happy. It's not even your work. Work mm-hmm. is the language that we use. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not what I'm doing. I'm not working. I'm like. Yeah. I enjoyed this too. I always enjoy. Yeah. I think because we just flow, we just be flowing. Just having a conversation. Just having a conversation. It's not choppy, no, you know. Not and the people get it and people like it. Like that's my DM me actually about our uh, our first um, conversation. They really like we were into it. And I was like, oh, y'all be like listening. <laughs> no, y'all be listening, listening, not just like you know playing. No, right, right. Because I hate that. No, I'm, I, was, I appreciate all support. I said, Mom, can you listen to this with me? She was like, Denise, you are so weird. Because just hearing my voice on um, audio was just It can so... be strange. It was strange to me at first. It, it can be very weird. Uh, I'm cringing. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> it can be very weird. Because you're... We, well, you know, you don't hear yourself how you even sound for exactly. real. Like, you only hear yourself after you hear a recording. And even then, your, mm-hmm. your like, brain still is altered a little bit. But... That's the closest to how you really sound to other people. So you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's how you sound. So you <laughs> learn to love it. <laughs> right. Nothing no, you can do about it. No, literally nothing you can do about it. Literally nothing you can do about it. But that, yeah, that was today's conversation, y'all. We just, we just wanted to let y'all know, like, you can do it. And honestly, fuck the haters. And. <laughs> Period point blank. Period point blank. That might not be the most eloquent way to say it, but fuck eloquence. Shit. <laughs> fuck all of that. Like, do whatever makes you happy. No, literally, do whatever makes you happy. I swear to goodness. Because, especially moving forward now, after all this is over, mm-hmm. sweetie, a job is oh. not even about to be. Oh, I'm, I'm on grind time. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but it's just like, you think a job is about to be really what you need to be concerned about? It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not. Because, you know, I, we'll have this conversation. We'll have this conversation later. We'll have this conversation. People, people, people 